呃，大家好，我是呃 Dreamy s a m i 二零二零的共同造点 Base。那呃，我们今天下午开始，就是我们会有两场的赞助议程，然后是由我们的呃赞助伙伴，就是来就是跟我们分享他们想要在这边讲的议题。那首先要跟大家呃。提醒的是，就是我们从下午开始的议程，就是没有口译的部分，所以大家呃要建议大家就是可以直接用 YouTube 的方式收看我们的议程。所以呃，如果呃你现在在任何地方想要收看呃现在的议程的话，欢迎就是打开 YouTube 可以就可以直接看我们这场议程。好，那、呃、我们今天下午第一场议程呢，就是呃，由我们的呃 F N F 伙伴，就是呃诺曼基金会，他们呃，他们在亚洲呃一些地方都有都有办公室，然后其中今天呃来参与这次议程的是由呃泰国办公室的 Mary， 就是呃。Mary 博士，然后他想要就是跟大家介绍，就是他在泰国，就是呃，希望使用桌游的方式来跟大家介绍，或来跟大家介绍，然后让大家体验哦、呃，所谓简单，所谓民主跟自由怎么去呃用桌游的方式去呈现。所以他有一款游戏叫做《Sing Democracy》，然后他希望他的题目是 Engage Thai Citizens with Games and Open Open。Platforms， 所以呃，我们现在就欢迎 Mary 博士来跟大家介绍，谢谢。Hi， my name is Pim Rapat， I'm from Thailand and I work for the f r i e s h n a u m a n Foundation。Today, with the title of my presentation, will be engaging Thai with games and platform. Allow me to um, share with you why we develop games and why it has to be games. Why not something else? Based on the experience of um, the foundation working in Thailand, observing how democracy works here, and um, In one of our experience to observe how campaigns uh, was conducted, we observe vote buyings in certain areas, and we realize that um, actually there is a lack of understanding in the democratic process, civil participation, and knowledge on the formation and the functioning of democratic society among Thai youth. So we decided that we. Perhaps develop a game to simulate um, how democracy, um, and we developed it in 2010. Why? The intention or the aim of us um, develop the first board game on democracy in Thailand is to fill the gap in civic education and um, the teaching of democratic values here, because we learn about the. Democracy through textbooks or um, lecture in class, but um, teachers have no teaching tools. And with children, you you need um, tools to engage them. It has to be fun, and they they have to be willing um, to learn. You know, with you, and not by force. Because then um, there is no point of you know like forcing them to to learn something, so um, we want to simulate uh, the complexity of the real world into games, and also you know like um, and we have to go into their world to and to make them understand. Then you have to uh, really understand the platform or the tool or the space where you can actually engage, get that um, get that. Attention um, and games can easily um, engage young people um, with different content, uh, different di difficult content. Because then, when you play, you you forget about yourself. You know, like you you play a, a role somehow uh, when you are in games. And usually, when when you play games, you don't. 
you say you are not yourself, but actually you are yourself, a kind of like that. So you have to, we have to go into the world of um, our target audience. And usually, who are our target audience? Our target audience usually are young people, but at different age. I will share with you um, our specific target group when we go through each one of our games. We have four games in total, and the first one I mentioned is Sim Democracy. What is Sim Democracy? Sim Democracy is a board game to simulate democracy or democratic society. Players will have two roles, two set of roles to play. First, there will be political parties where they have to come up, they have to come to develop their party platform, go campaigning, go to election, and if they are elected, then the role change from political party or candidates in the election to governing party. So when they, gov they, when they are a governing party, they have a set of budget they have to allocate according to the needs of the citizens in principle or according to their interest. So the citizens then will have to monitor the performance, how the government perform, how the government spend um, budget, uh, whether it's according to the people interest or according to the government or the politician interest. So you have, um, um, you have a role to actually earn your income, pay tax. And, but you have to actually monitor how the government spend um, budget as well. And, and the government role is to collect tax and to solve problems and take care of the country as a whole and not to take care of specific group in the society. And at the end of the game, then you can evaluate the performance of the government, whether they uh, perform to your satisfaction or not. And if they perform according to your satisfaction, then you can give them star um, at the end as well. This game um, is continuing. We have different versions of the game, and the latest one is civil power, because we think uh, for democracy to work, people in the society will have to be active. Um, and this game, target first-time water. So that means we want to prepare young uh, people who are going to vote to understand um, the functioning democracy um, in the real world. And this game we have translated into different languages. Uh, we, we have uh, Bahasa Indonesia, Bahasa Malaysia, uh, Korean, uh, French, some of the teachers in India, um, they translated in, into French, and uh, the game has been carried to different parts of the world, including in South Africa, when they use it um, before the election, and um, in many parts of the world. Um, and it's keep going, um, because every time we think that's the end, um, it's too long, people won't be interested, that is when we receive um, a lot more requests from different parts of the world, not only in Thailand, but in, in many countries. Let me then move to um, the, next, the next one, actually, um, is here. It's right card game. Um, because of the success of Sim Democracy in 2010, you know, um, for many years, and um, we, we, we have been invited so many uh, countries to introduce the game. And then uh, we got a request from the Ministry of Justice in Thailand if we can simplify um, the principles of human rights or universal declaration of human rights into a simple card game. With the experience of Sim Democracy as a board game and um, it's a bit complicated and complex game, like a big game, then um, we want to do something easier to carry and um, just to have a simple game mechanic with the content of human rights principles, um, like with the global standard. 
So we we decided to to develop card game on human rights instead, and it's very simple. The game mechanic is you have the situation card where you have um, discrimination situation and uh, violation of uh, of rights in the society, and then you have. And um, you have situations, and then you have um, human right mechanism. If you see discrimination or rights violation, how can you help? How can you uh, make it happen? How can you make it better? How can you help people? Then so do you learn uh, mechanism in the game? Um, with this, um, is the principles of human rights of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but then um, when we launch it, um, there are many international organizations or even organizations in Thailand uh, would like us to extend it to other areas of rights. So we so far have extension pack on human rights defenders. We have um, extension pack on. Uh, human trafficking, and the last one is on SOGI, um, on LGBTIQ. So I think we cover more or less um, the the rights issues um, we are facing um, at the moment around the world. The game is very simple, so you just um, have a situation cast, discuss with your friends um, about what kind of rights in the situation is violated or discriminated, and then uh, what kind of mechanism you know would would help, and um, and this card this card game although the game the mechanic is very simple and easy to play, but the the heart of the game or the key success is how would you convince people um, to agree with you, to understand your viewpoint and to agree that that would be the way you can solve or you can help people who are discriminated or violated. Um, and this one then you learn about rights. Uh, what kind of rights do you have and also you learn to respect others because people, other people also have the same rights that you have to respect and they have to respect you. So it's the two folds of, for this game, like you learn about your own rights and also to protect your rights and not to violate others or to respect other people's rights as well. With the card game that um, it's very easy to carry very simple game mechanic to play. Then uh, we we uh, we were requested by another partner organizations in Thailand and um, and they are working on media literacy. And two years ago, um, we are faced we we have faced or confronted with the impact of the. Uh, of disinformation and misinformation, fake news, if you called it, um, and then uh, with now you have prosumer like you you can have young people who can produce media themselves, but they are not journalists, so they don't learn um, what is harmful and what are not. So uh, we think we should maybe perhaps help teachers in Thailand uh, to develop a teaching tool to equip young students with media literacy. That's the reason why we came up with this uh, media literacy card game. This one is easy as well. Um, we have five questions to fill in, like to, for players to, uh, to answer. First is who created the message, like we want players to understand that media uh, is created. Like there must be someone who created it, who created the message. And they send it to you with purpose. And they use some techniques to get your attention. And also they they hide some messages, some values, you know, in inside the information or media that they um, they send it to you. And also the last one is people 
interpreted um, information or news or media differently. I can, when I receive news, I'm, I may interpret it something, but then when you receive the same thing, you might not think the same way that I interpreted it or I, when, the way I think, the way I perceive it. So um, that is a different interpretation of information we receive and that if we go through the five questions, it at least slow you down whenever you receive information. You, then you question, you ask yourself, who created this? Why do they send it to you? What do they want from you? What kind of um, techniques they use? And um, other people might not think the same as you. Or might not, we, have, we can have different opinion and it's good to have a diversity of opinion as well. And with these two card games, um, we target secondary school, actually um, eight, above like nine years old above. And actually when we introduce it and when we go around the country trying to introduce the game or provide civic education in schools, we found out that um, not only um, our target audience can learn about media literacy, but also adult or uh, even university students or um, executive like people in executive position also um, don't ask I mean they trust they tr they trust whatever they see on uh, different channels of media outlets because they think the information when it's distributed must be true, which is not um, in the real world. Um, and then we found out that um, card game can be used in different target groups. It's not specifically for young people. And the last game that we have developed is actually for adults because a lot of people ask us, why you develop game only for young people? Why don't you develop games for adults? You know, because people, the tendency of people who likes to play game has changed. If you ask uh, adult or adult to play games 10 years ago, they would say no, no way, no way that I'll play game because game is for kids. But nowadays, um, things change and um, adult also would like to, to play games, you know, and, and now they realize game is not just for fun but it can be edutainment, you can have fun while learning something and while learning difficult, difficult content as well. That's the reason why um, the perception of game have changed a lot in Thailand in the past few years. We have requested, um, a, we, we requested uh, from a leading in uh, Ting Tang in Thailand to develop a game on how to manage conflict in the society. And it's called Peace So Crazy. This is like a table game. It's a role play that um, in every conflict, you have uh, conflict parties and you have different uh, stakeholders who actually play a role uh, in mending or uh, uh, or trying to provide creative solution that is acceptable for for both you and me, let's say, if we are in conflict. So this game is based on um, non-violence communication. Um, how would you communicate um, to make, um, you know, to not to worsen the conflict, but trying to get out of the conflict. and. Um, you have to first find out the needs of conflict parties. So uh, people in different multi-stakeholders or players who play in the game, they will try to ask questions or have a different way to find out what are the needs of conflict parties. Because if you know the needs or underneath, you know, like deep down inside of the conflict parties, what actually they want, what is their fear, then it's very, then it's possible that 
you can propose creative solutions that can be acceptable to both of them. Um, and with Thailand in the past 10 years being in conflict loop or conflict cycle, um, this game is useful for us to learn not only for the at the national level of conflict, but um, in family, in schools, in organizations, uh, um, at the community level, or even between um, or at international levels. You know, like we have conflicts every day, or and every one of us confront with conflict every time. Um, this game will help you um, to understand how we can. Um, how we can manage conflict at different levels. And lastly, since the, the title of this presentation is about engaging Thai citizens with games and platform, I'd just like to introduce you to Dream Thailand Platform. Dream Thailand Platform is a physical and online um, body. We have two um, platforms because um, it all started in 2012 when there was a survey saying that Thai citizens, um, Thai youth are not interested in politics. With our experience working a lot with youth, we don't believe that that assumption was true. So we conducted um, a survey, like a physical survey. We go around the country asking um, more than 2,000 young people um, what are their concerns for the countries and what are their wishes? What are their dreams for the country? And usually what we have heard so far, the findings of the physical platform is they want to have a participatory approach um, in our education. They want to participate actively in democracy or in political system. They want to become an entrepreneur. They want to be equipped with knowledge, they want to be equipped with tools, and they want the country as a whole or the, the society to move forward or get out of the conflict. So, you know, like a Dream Thailand platform is a platform where you can perhaps get back to basic, get back to, um, to what people want and decide from there. It's just like seeing democracy when we see people want to learn about democracy in a simple way, in an easy way. Um, and in a participatory way, then sim democracy can engage them and can sell uh, to their heart and soul, like they like to play. And um, the rice card game as well, like they want to learn about human rights, but they don't want to go to lecture. So human rights answer their call, L just like media literacy card game. They want to learn how to become media literacy. So they just play the game, get into five questions, and quickly they learn how to become media literacy. And Dream Thailand platform during the the COVID nineteen lockdown, we came up with we conducted the online survey for almost two thousand people, and their wishes uh, we collected their wishes, their concerns for the country, and the findings of the online survey that we recently done um, and the findings that we collected almost eight years ago are not different. Um, it said something. It, it means the wish of the, of the young people in Thailand is not, is not fulfilled. So um, there are a lot to do and a lot um, to fill up. But at least um, now that there are a platform uh, for them to continue, you know, um, expressing themselves, sharing their wishes and um, their visions of the country. And usually we present this um, when we have the findings of, the, of young people, then we present the findings, um, the wishes, the dreams of young people to the government, to policy makers, to the media, so that they can actually communicate um, dreams of young people um, to the public and then we can actually, um, each one of us, including us in Thailand, like the Free Norman Foundation, we can pick something that we can do and contribute to the society. And we want young people to, to be skeptical, uh, be practical, be shy, be prosper, and 
and we want them to continue asking the question all the time. Thank you very much. Hello, Mary. Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, let me open. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so let's uh, have some um, Q&A for yes. your session. So we have some uh, participants want to ask you about like your board game. I think the board game is very cool. So uh, we have uh, participants want to ask if, uh, if there is any change to localization into Chinese and are these board games uh, so, so basically designed for uh, Thailand or they can be used uh, University? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's actually, we have discussed in, uh, with many people that we wanted to translate into Chinese uh, a few years back, but we haven't started yet. And I think the, the full board, uh, the board game or the card games I presented um, can be used uh, globally, so you can bring it to Taiwan and translate it into Mandarin. And I think the game mechanic is simple enough for uh, everyone to play. Is that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so because we we have just a little bit time, so I I will just. Going to our uh, next questions. Okay, so uh, my ex impression is the protest in Thailand is uh, is uh, less energy and engage people with games is is a happy have approach. Is this because of the mindset of the Thai people? Like uh, board game is very happy thing, so Thai people maybe want to enjoy the game. Um, yes and no. Um, happy approach or uh, when they play board game. I think we have to look back like in my talk earlier. Um, 10 years ago when we introduced sim democracy in, in Thailand, uh, it wasn't very popular. Um, it was popular among the young people but not not the society as a whole, but you know, like throughout the ten years, uh, the past ten years, we have noticed changes in the society. Now we have a lot of board game cafe or um, board game um, shop, you know, all over the country, especially in front of uh, universities and schools. So. Um, yeah, I think it's a happy approach because, you know, like you simulate um, the reality into a game, right? So when you discuss, um, you don't need to confront with your friends, uh, although you have different uh, political opinion, but you can still discuss um, among yourself um, because that is not the real world. You still think like you are in the game, but that, but that it shows, as I said in my presentation, um, it reflects, you know, your belief um, and your opinion uh, in the real world as well when you play games. You are yourself much more than you think. Yeah, I think the, the point in this game is like how we uh, manage the conflict. So it's very, yeah, it's very difficult to, to manage it uh, if they are your friends and you uh, face the, the true situation. So I think it's very difficult, yeah. So uh, let's get into the, our, uh, the last questions. Okay. Uh, me and my friends think about board games, about rights or education are hard to promote or make players play land more than two times. Have you met some trouble? trouble? <laughs> um, yes, and you know, when we first launched um, card game, 
we face that problems and well before we facing before when we uh before uh we face such problems we discuss among the team developers like um because whenever you develop any games you prefer that players play more than one time right you want them to revisit and play the game again and again so we have like basic level intermediate level and also advanced level you have uh, additional functions into the game you have different missions um because if you play at the basic level then um it's very simple right um you just answer uh, or find out the solutions or answer the questions of the card game but um if you if you get bored then you can go to intermediate level and you have different functions added on and if you play for the for more times right if you repeat uh you you play you play the game repeatedly then you can go for advanced um, level and you have different missions and um then you know like with missions you can play a few times because whoever want to play games or whoever play games you want to win so um if it is um advanced level and it's getting more difficult you just want to make further attempt right to to win the game so we have that functions in all our games so you have the basic level for um, people who get to play the game for the first time and also you have advanced level for people who um, revisit the game and they want to win further in the game okay thank you mark uh, i i i heard about a, a little bit i heard a thing at your uh, answers like everyone wants to win but who but who really wins in in our democracy so i think it's very uh interesting uh question about this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh because we 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 are uh we are not wrong of of our time so we are very thank you for like mary to uh answer the question uh, to us so thank you very much Thank you. Thank you.